And at any rate, we're ready to go. Underway with the kick, Kenny Bias will return it from the two. And hit hard at the 10 and dumped there and a good start for the Utah State special teams as Kenny Bias really limited in what he could get on that return. UTSA will start out with it. And as Forrest mentioned, they have struggled early in the ball game, scoreless in the first quarter, each of the last two games, losses to San Jose State and Rice. There's a look at Ryan Polite, redshirt freshman quarterback in his second start with Eric Sosa, the normal starter, out with a hip injury. Sosa watching from the sidelines as Polite started slowly and then threw for more than 300 yards last week. Quick out here to Cam Jones, and he's pushed out of bounds after a solid gain on first down. And I like that play to start the ball game. We talked to Ryan Polite early yesterday, and he talked about being nervous with his first start last week. You want to get him some early complete passes to get that confidence going in this ball game. He is a dual threat quarterback, started two of seven last week, then finished 18 of 25, so he really came on once he got comfortable. Jones, normally a wide receiver, deep at tailback here. They give it to Evans Okacha running right, and he turns upfield and gets across the 15, but it'll bring up third and four or five for UTSA. What's interesting about this ball game also from the Utah State standpoint is defensive coordinator Dave Aranda talked about his team being able to play a little bit more comfortably because they felt like with polite at quarterback as opposed to Sosa that he would be able to, you know, adjust, uh, their defense would be able to adjust to the run. Third and five here. Option by Polite. Pitch to Okacha. Locked up in the backfield. Big hit by Willie Davis, the cornerback, coming up to make the play and stopping UTSA on its first series. And you have to think if Sosa's in the ball game that they're going to pass the ball in this situation, but you want to be careful. You get the ball to Akashka, but you had great pursuit from the Utah State defense not allowing UTSA to get to the edge. Now UTSA ranks last in the Western Athletic Conference in net punting yards, and they have switched punters. Christian Stern is going to punt here. He's punted once in each of the last two games. And it's blocked, knocked down and out of bounds by Utah State. And right off the bat, a big play. It was Devontae Glover Wright who got in there and got a big piece of it. And Utah State comes into this ball game with the ability to block kicks. We saw them do this last week in their ball game against New Mexico State, and they continue to make big plays on special teams. Fifth block of the season for Utah State. And for UTSA, which turned the ball over six times last week, couldn't have imagined a worse start. Utah State first and goal at the five. Kerwin Williams, the lone tailback behind Chucky Keaton, the sophomore. Williams straight up the gut, gets inside the five, stopped near the goal line, and the whistles blow as the Utah State offensive line try to push their man into the end zone, but it will be second and goal. Say he got down to the two on the play. Utah State trying to get on the board in the first three minutes of the game. Keaton looking to throw. He has Bartlett wide open. Kellen Bartlett, the tight end, lined up at fullback, scores the opening touchdown, just 2.49 in. This is a tough way for the UTSA defense to start, but they had poor field position, and they tried to do their best, but when you've got a quarterback that can make plays with his feet, he sucks the defense in, which allows the tight end to get out into the flat and be wide open for the touchdown. Kellen Bartlett, his second touchdown catch of the year, his first came against Utah. And Nick Diaz for the extra point for Utah State. Knocks it through, and it's the Aggies seven, the Roadrunners nothing. 
UTSA will try and rebound when we come back. Utah State 7, UTSA nothing, just underway. Come back with it. Utah State has seized control of this one early. A blocked punt and a touchdown pass to Kellen Bartlett has the Aggies on top. Jaron Bentrude going to kick off once again for Utah State. Cam Jones on the return this time from the six-yard line. Gets to the 25 and locks the football away at the last minute as Utah State tried to knock it loose. That's where UTSA will start, but we go back to the touchdown. Kellen Bartlett starts in the backfield, ends up catching the touchdown. And Kellen Bartlett, a tight, a part, Bartlett, a tight end with 26 receptions. You've got to pay attention to him, but because of Chucky Keaton's ability to scramble out of the backfield and make plays with his feet, the defense got locked into him and lost the tight end going into the flat. Second chance for the UTSA offense and Ryan Polite. And again, this formation with Cam Jones, the deep man in the backfield. Quick toss out to Marcellus Mack. And he's thrown to the turf by Nevin Lawson, the junior cornerback. Another gain on first down for UTSA. And if you're UTSA, this is what you want to continue to do. This will soften up that Utah State defense and allow them to get some running lanes later on in the ball game. You do not want to allow this Utah State team to dictate to you, if you're UTSA, what you're able to do on offense. Second and six for Larry Coker's Roadrunners. David Glasgow in the backfield alongside Polite. They throw it quickly to Jones. He dropped the football, dives on it, but it'll be called an incomplete pass. As Cam Jones couldn't find the handle with Cole Hicks trying to block for him. And Cole Hicks has to do a better job of protecting his receiver. If he makes that block, the receiver is able to get up the field maybe four or five yards and you get a positive gain and you're in third and short as opposed to third and long. You've got to make that play. Third and six, and we're four minutes into the game, but this is a big play in terms of confidence for UTSA. Went three and out on its first possession. Polite runs the option with Cam Jones trying to pick up speed, and he's met right away, and Utah State shuts it down again. Boje Filimoyayatu was one of the men in there on the tackle. And if you look at this play, I think Polite pitched this ball prematurely. He had no pressure on him. You've got to make the defense come up and respond to you as opposed to pitching it as early as he did on that play. So UTSA to punt again right away. Christian Stern had his first effort blocked. Gets this one away as Utah State chooses to set up the return. Taken and... Taken down after a minimal game was Cameron Webb. And Utah State will start inside its own 30-yard line. So better execution, at least on the special team side of things, for UTSA. Well, Utah State didn't rush on that play, and I think they wanted to get their return set up. They probably figured that UTSA would have max protection as opposed to what they did the last time. So they want to make sure they get the ball. Utah State already in front, 7-0. And the Aggies, one of the best in the country in first quarter scoring and scoring advantage. More on that in a second as you look at the starters. Chucky Keaton to throw for the second time. Hits Jacobs outside, and he's knocked out of bounds by Tristan Wade. As Chuck Jacobs, the senior from Oakland, California, has the first down yardage. Again, we look at the lineup. Jacobs, Austin, and Kellen Bartlett among the re receivers for Keaton. First and 10 out at the 39. Bartlett to throw again. This time he has Matt Austin, and Darian Starling throws him out of bounds, but clearly Utah State thinks they can take advantage of this UTSA secondary. Well, the reason they're able to do that because UTSA is not getting any pass rush, and you're allowing Chucky e. Keaton to sit back there very comfortably. Two tight ends in the game for Utah State, Tialavea and Bartlett. Play action. Want to go deep for Jacobs. Overshot him. Would have been another big play. 
And these are some of the things that I saw Tristan Wade do last week in the ball game against San Jose State. He gets caught looking in the backfield. He has to do a better job of protecting the middle of the field and not allowing these receivers to get down in the scene. Third and one. Bartlett is in the backfield again as a fullback. A give to Williams running right, and he has the first down. Wade did enough to bring him down, but Utah State moves into UTSA territory. And one thing Tristan Wade does a good job of is coming up and filling and not allowing Williams to get out to the outside because there was no one there. He may take it to the house if he gets around the edge. Three wide receivers for Chucky e. Keaton to his left. Bartlett, one of them, comes in motion. It's a read play. He's hit in the backfield, taken down. Cody Rogers, the big hit for UTSA behind the line of scrimmage. And that was a great play by Cody Rogers, not allowing himself to fall for the fake and staying with the quarterback, playing assignment football. That is important when you look at this Utah State offense and what they're able to do. Keaton to throw on second down. Goes outside, has Dante Glover right. The man who blocked the punt, he'll play on defense, he'll play on offense. He's also the third string quarterback for Utah State. And it'll bring up third and three. Empty backfield for Keaton. Throws, has Bartlett, has the first down. Pretty simple right there. Cody Berry on the tackle for UTSA. And what Utah State is doing, they're subbing you know, for their specialty positions, for but they're lining up and they're running play after play after play. They're not allowing UTSA to get subs into the ball game. 8.45 to play in the first quarter. Utah State in control on its first sustained drive. At the 31 of UTSA. Keaton to throw play action again. Wants Glover right. Eric Brown is there, knocks it down. Intercepted by UTSA. Tristan Wade got it in the end zone. And that was a great play by the defensive back. He played the ball as opposed to playing the, the receiver. Eric Brown stuck his hand in there, got the ball up in the air, and Tristan Wade recovering in the middle, something I just talked about, not allowing these receivers to get down the field. He recovered in the middle and was able to make a play. Eric Brown leads the whack in interceptions with four. They said most teams have stopped throwing in his direction. That's why he knocked it away, and Wade came up with the interception. Third interception of the year for Tristan Wade. And the play is going to be under review. We didn't see anything that would make us think twice about the interception, but they're going to have a look at it. And this is why you never give up on a play. You know, if, you, if you're a safety, Tristan Wade, you can say, okay, the throw is going into the end zone. I might not be able to make a play. But he runs. He does not give up on this play. And because he does not, the ball is up in the air. He's able to make a play on it. And that was great concentration on his part to be able to hold on to that football. It looked like he got his hands up under the ball. I think this will definitely be an interception for Tristan Wade. And this is the big play that we were talking about early in the ball game. Jonathan, UTSA needs this, and maybe this will instill some confidence in this offense. UTSA led the country in turnover margin entering last week. Then they turned the ball over six times, even though they forced three, so that hurt them quite a bit in that 52-24 loss to San Jose State. A blocked punt against them early, and the defense comes right back with the big interception. We'll take a timeout while they take a look at this one. When we come back, the verdict and potentially UTSA with the ball right after this. After review, the ball was intercepted in the end zone. The result of the play is a touchback. First down. Is his microphone working? Back here at the Alamo Dome. As we check on our head ref, 
Claire Gaussman making the ruling on that call. Couldn't hear it everywhere in the stadium, but we got the point. UTSA has the ball after the interception. First and 10 at its own 20. Polite quick out pass to Brandon Armstrong. Gets across the 25. So far, I think they've picked up at least five yards on every first down for us, but on second and third, totally ineffective. Well, they got to continue to do what they're doing on first down, and that's get the ball to athletes in space and allow them to make plays. One thing I like about Ryan Polite, he spreads the ball around. Last week, 11 different receivers caught at least one pass, and I like that you have to continue to do that so Utah State can't key in on one person. Under eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Utah State in front after the blocked punt. They fake it in Jones' direction. Throw to Aaron Holmes, and he's hit right away. Davis again. He's been very active early, and it's a short game for UTSA. And that was a dangerous pass because Polite looked at his receiver the entire time. If the defense is looking at Polite, they have an easy pick six on that play. So if I'm the coaching staff for UTSA, I'm warning Polite, look off your receivers. You got to look at Davis got to look at Davis, the senior from Spokane. Had his first interception of the season last week. Didn't get in on that one against Polite. Third and one. Almost got the defense to jump, but no flag flies. Play action, looking downfield for Hubble. Catch me, first down. And I love this play, and it was made possible by the great play action fake. If you watch Polite, he waited for Hubble to clear the third-level defenders. He lofted up where only he could make a play on the football. That is a great play on third and short. Cole Hubble, the sophomore from Bandera, just his fifth catch of the year, and a big one. So they're set up at the Utah State 33. Light looks outside for Okacha, just got it in there, and he ends up picking up pretty good yardage. Tyler Fackrell was closing fast. And this is exactly what you want, positive yards on first down. I like the way he looked off his receiver. He didn't look directly at him upon getting the snap that allowed Okacha to get outside and be able to get off the field and get positive yards. Another five-yard gain on first down. UTSA at the Utah State, 28. Option play, Polite keeps it and is taken down in the backfield by Zach Vigil. Actually, he'll pick up a couple yards on the play to bring up third and four. Vigil out of Clearfield, Utah. One of the leaders in tackles. That's his 66th of the year. Big possession here. It's a little bit too long for a comfortable field goal effort, so they'd really like to pick up the first down and get some points. Polite slant to Cam Jones, has the first down. And that was a great blitz pickup by the UTSA offensive line. They picked up the linebackers coming in, giving Polite time to find his receiver coming on a short crossing route and get the first down. So they're at the 21 now, and this is some of the most confident efforts we've seen from the UTSA offense. They haven't run the ball much in this game, but they go eye formation with just one receiver to the top of the screen, Marcellus Mack. Option, polite pitches to Glasgow. He got a big block and steps out of bounds inside the 20-yard line as Nate Shaw provided the block on the play. And as opposed to the last time they ran this play, Polite waited, he made the pressure come up to him, then he made the pitch, which allowed his back to get positive yards. And that comes as the maturation process for Polite continues to grow. He is still a very young quarterback, so he has not seen a lot of what he'll see today against this Utah State defense. Second and seven. See both sides shifting fronts. Holmes in motion. Polite fumbled the snap and just gave it to Okacha, who powers into the line and won't gain anything. So 
little extra talking there between McCade Brady from Utah State. Cole Hicks from UTSA. And back to the 19-yard line here. It'll be third and eight. But again, they're at least in field goal range to try to get something out of this if they can't convert on third down. Again, Cam Jones behind the quarterback, Polite. Shovel pass inside. He's tripped up near the first down. I think just short of it. It was Glasgow. And they are a yard short. And this is a great misdirection play. Glasgow was able to maintain his balance and get up the field and get positive yards. And what we see from this UTSA offense is being able to sustain a drive. Christian Stern going to try the field goal. It'll be a 29-yarder on fourth and one. Kick is up and good, and it's only the second time all season anybody has scored against Utah State in the first quarter. That's courtesy of ESPN Stats and Information. UTSA on the board. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Back here in San Antonio where they have embraced this Roadrunners team now in its second season here at the Alamo Dome, averaging more than 30,000 fans a game here in their history. And they did just get on the board with a field goal from Christian Stern. It's Utah State 7, UTSA 3 as we come back. And UTSA set to kick it away. Parker Cundiff. Actually, Josh Ward is going to take over kicking off here. And kickoff field position has been a problem for UTSA. We'll see how they cover this one. Jacobs from the goal line. Gets to the 20, gets across the 25, and he's hit there by Charles Ward. And Utah State will start inside its own 30. A couple of updates for you for UTSA. The wide receiver, Kenny Bias, suffered a knee injury. He is not expected to return, and he's the second UTSA wide receiver out now after Kenny Harrison. And Forrest, despite the absences, that drive was very impressive. Well, 10 plays, 80 yards, and this is something that defensive coordinator David Aranda talked to us about during our conference call. He said that his team, his Utah State defense, had given up 11 drives of over 10 plays, which was their weakness, which was also UTSA's strength, and we see it early in this ball game. So Utah State will try to answer here at its own 28. Keaton, quick throw wide to Van Leeuwen, and he gets to the first down marker before stumbling out of bounds. Travis Van Leeuwen, the junior from Provo. If you watch what Utah State is doing, they're taking advantage of their speed to the outside. They're getting the ball immediately out to their receivers and allowing them to get north and south and get positive yardage. Utah State at the 40-yard line. Keaton looks right. Wants to cut inside, and he's hit hard by Stephen Kerfis after a two-yard pickup. And that was great coverage by UTSA, not allowing Keaton to have any pockets to throw the football. And we talked early in this ballgame about Kerfis spying on Keaton, and you see him here ready to make a play when Keaton turns the ball up the field. Second and eight. Kerwin Williams running right, met there, stood up. Blake Terry and Ashad Mabry in on that tackle. And I loved what Blake Terry did on that play. He found the lane. He did not get caught up in all the traffic. He was able to get to Kerwin Williams and not allow him to get going up the field. Eric Brown in there as well. It's third down in this crowd. On its feet, third and six. Pressure coming. They get it out early and a big hit and a personal foul penalty for roughing the passer. This is going to hurt UTSA. We didn't hear who it was on, but it was a roughing the passer penalty. And, and I it's, it's, it's going to negate a big play. I think it's on Stephen Kerfis. And he got a little bit too aggressive on this play. 
He did not need to take this shot on Chucky Keaton. They had the play diagnosed, and that is a big, big, you know, mistake by Kerfish. You cannot do this at this juncture of the ball game. And that is going to be a big swing. Instead of forcing a punt, Utah State moves into UTSA territory at the Roadrunner 40-yard line. But if you're UTSA, you've got to continue to do what you've been doing on that drive. Continue to make plays. Four wide receivers to the left. Now Williams will return to the backfield. Trying to set up a screen the first time we've seen it. And Williams has running room down the sideline. Kerwin Williams inside the 10. Utah State so effective with screens, and they set that one up perfectly. And this was the perfect time to call this play. You've got a defense that's playing aggressive, that's getting up the field. And look at the linemen getting downfield, cut blocking. They're moving around. You don't see linemen making blocks like this, and this is why they do so well on this play. Kerwin Williams, their leading receiver in terms of yardage and catches on the season, and you saw why. First and goal at the seven. Williams running right, hit, stood up, and thrown backward. Got down to the four, though, before his forward progress was halted. If UTSA can get a stop and hold Utah State to three points on this drive, that will be big as far as a confidence booster for this entire ball club. Second and goal for Utah State at the four. And I think the Aggies are going to run the clock down to the end of the quarter. It could have been a big momentum swing in UTSA's favor. Will Utah State capitalize and add to its lead? We'll find out after a break. Utah State seven, UTSA three. First quarter in the books. Don't go away.